Hello there, and welcome back to Normal Guy Games. Um, as you can see, I have a big project coming up here soon. And uh, But, before we get to that, I have a, another video to show off. I've been doing a lot of um, Black Sight Studio stuff. Uh, specifically, I'm really into Don't Look Back at the moment. So, I've got a... Um, got a, a model, you know, that I, I painted, and, uh, you know, I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, excuse the voice, I've been really, really sick, and hopefully we'll be able to get through this without too much of an incident. So, uh, here we go. So, we've got the Judge of Hangman's Rock. This model is really cool. He's very tall compared to the rest of the of the miniatures that come in the game. I, I really like that. So the first thing I did is, um, as I as I have been doing, is I did a little bit of dry brushing of ivory, and then a lighter ivory, and then finally a um, a pure white highlight. Now, when you're dry brushing these miniatures, since they're they are a little fragile, so you want to brace it like I'm doing with my finger here. This part is something we're all familiar with, just doing a little bit of uh, a white. Now, the colors I've chosen here are all Pro Acro colors. So this is the, uh, the blue that comes in the Vinci V set. It is the uh, Payne's Gray. And I'm using that to do his shirt, or his jacket, actually. I guess it's a jacket or shirt, one of the two, I'm not sure. And then I'm using the... Um, dark warm gray for his hat and I really like the way that this paint turns out that dark warm gray comes out very matte but at the same time it, it it's a very nice gray I really have a hard time explaining it <clears throat> so I moved on to coal black for his hair and then I took some of that dark warm gray and I actually uh, did a little bit of wet blending by adding some of that that gray up on the the very uh, raised sections which makes a like kind of a, a lighter black section there I used mahogany for the pants which gives them a dark brown and then uh, once I was done with that I used dark umber to paint his satchel here you know, I'm actually working on the video in the background, as you can see, and, and I just realized, like, now is the time for me to say, hey, if you haven't given me a like or a subscribe, please do so, because every like, every subscribe really helps, every, all the view hours I can get really help, and, you know, do it. Hit the button, it's down there, down there, you can just hit the button, and it'll be good. Appreciate it. Now, dark umber is is a color that I have. It's actually kind of my go-to for leather right now. I really like the way that umber and dark, dark umber and light umber really work. Um, the same color for his axe, and the um, I took some more of that mahogany and I put some of that mahogany in the lower creases in his pants just to kind of make them darker. And this is the only non pro acro paint that I used besides a wash. This is um, Plague Bearer Flesh. I kind of wanted him to be kind of sickly and green because I feel like that, you know, just the story from this character here is really cool he apparently was a judge and he was very harsh on sailors eventually a, a group of uh of well pirates he, he he didn't like pirates and he was very harsh on any sailors that he considered to be pirates and eventually they you know they offed him because <laughs> he was being a little too harsh so i'm taking some of that gray and uh, i'm also taking a bright warm or a bright warm gray and i'm putting that on the edges of the hat and i'm also putting it on the uh, the raised areas of his hair now this is just me doing a little bit of an edge highlight and i use that same uh, dark gray for his shoes just to scuff them up a little bit and because you know this this guy's a ghost he's not going to look great so i took a lighter blue which is a um kind of an almost a blue jean kind of a blue from Pro Acryl. It's a um, uh, dark gray blue and it really complements Payne's gray pretty well. 
and I'm using that to do some edge highlights or whatnot. Um, then I'm using silver to do the axe head, and the axe head, I'm not entirely worried about it, but I did want some silver on there. I'll show you why at the end. Um, I'm taking some light umber now, and I'm doing a little bit of highlight on the um, on the satchel, the strap, the belt, and I'm actually going to use some of that light umber to do his pants as well. I'm, and once once it's mostly off, this is kind of almost like a dry brush that I'm using here. I just kind of swipe it across just to make the pants look worn and dirty and old. And I use that same method to do the axe as well, to make the axe handle look worn and, and old. Um, his axe is kind of a big part of his story, like so that that is what I'm using as the focal point. You'll see what I mean later. Uh, so this is Agrax Earthshade. Eventually I do plan on buying the Pro Acryl uh, washes and giving them a shot, but for now this is what I got. I used my go-to Sterling Mud. This is this is what I'm using for all of my Don't Look Back miniatures. Now I'm I'm going back here with that same dark gray, um, the dark gray blue, and I'm using that to do another set of highlights once again, generally in the same area that I did last time, over top of this uh, this dark brown wash because I do want some of the parts and pieces to stick out a little better. And to do that, you got to use kind of a lighter color just to kind of bring things out. Now, um, I, I took a sky blue, which is again pro acryl, and I did a couple of just a few taps here and there. Um, this is once again, this is my light umber, and I am just doing another set of highlights over top of the pants in a couple of areas around the cuffs of the pants and you know across the legs again just to kind of scuff things up and make them look old and I'm doing that same method where I just kind of slap it across the the front and the back of the legs now the important part here is unfortunately one that I, I can't record because I don't have a setup that allows me to record my airbrushing but let me show you what I mean this is my favorite part here I actually took the airbrush with some bright pyro, pyro red and I um, made the axe the focal point for red OSL because the axe like I said is kind of a big part of his story but you can't really see it on the turntable so let me show you what it really looks like when you when you angle it around the OSL effect it turned it, it looked very very good it turned out very very nice so this is what it looks like from the front you can see that OSL anyway uh, if you have enjoyed this please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video